Well, good morning. We're switching musical instruments from the clarion to the, uh, the Yamaha piano. Uh, we're still receiving feedback. Uh, we worked on the light switch around that area. Um, we were able to correct some static, but, uh, but apparently the electrical system and uh, just how things are, are uh, wired and how that electrical current's moving through things. So, um, good morning. It's a beautiful day, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, as Mr. Rogers would say. And I think it's a beautiful Navy day, too. It's nice and cool and refreshing. I think we're about one week behind uh, from having a white Christmas, but we're still in the Christmas season. And Christmas is always year-round. So, Happy New Year, and can Merry Christmas as we continue to celebrate uh, Christmas. There's several announcements uh, printed in the bulletin. I want to thank Eric for um, purchasing the, um, or donating the, um, the DVD series, The Chosen, the first two series. Uh, they're both CDs are in the library, but actually one's in the library right now. So one's being used, and uh, so they're in the library. Uh, the Shrine Circus coupons, we received word that it'll be at the Dort Financial Center in Flint. And we do have coupons that are downstairs. So during the coffee hour, please pick those up uh, to attend the, uh, the circus. This after worship... Uh, we will be having a nominating committee to meet in my, uh, the pastor's office. And next week, uh, we will have uh, two committee meetings. Uh, one is the worship committee, which will meet in the Geneva room. And the member care meeting will be here in the sanctuary. So please take note. And also next week, we will have the, uh, the children's Christmas program. Any announcements that you would like to make at this time? I would say probably this is going to be our lowest attendance in worship. It usually is, traditionally. You know, uh, sometimes the Sunday after Christmas, but normally it um, could be the second Sunday after Christmas. And my sympathy does go out to all the Michigan fans, football fans. Uh, yes, um, um, I'm sorry for the loss, um, and, uh, and, uh, and my congratulations goes out to the Central Michigan uh, University fans. Uh, the Chippewas won their game, so that's a great thing. So, huh? So did Michigan State. Well, Michigan State, yes, in that. You're right. They, they play what, Pittsburgh? Yep, Pitt. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I'm sorry for the Michigan State University of, of my forgetfulness, but congratulations to them. Thank you, Ed. I think that covers the Michigan football uh, winnings and losses. But anyway, let us continue uh, with the worship of God. Men and women, old and young, together. Praise God and exalt the author of life. God commanded and we were created. God sustains us and enables us to grow. Know that we are chosen by God, holy and beloved. We are called into one body, the church of Jesus Christ. Let us turn to the hymn, Good Christian Men Rejoice, and let us stand.
Let us pray. Heavenly Parent, we have wandered away to pursue our own agenda. We have laid aside your expectation that we will forbear one another and forgive. We harbor grudges against people. There are some we neglect and some we disdain. We have viewed them neither as your beloved nor as our sisters and brothers. The peace of Christ does not rule in our hearts. Your truth is not what flows from our lips or finds expression in our actions. O oh God, turn us around that what we do may be a genuine expression of your love through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray and confess our personal sin before God in silence. Amen. God has already forgiven us when we are truly sorry and repent of our neglect and our wrongful thoughts and deeds. We are able to accept that forgiveness. The love of God enables us to love. Draw close to the eternal and exalted name of the one who rules all time and space. I invite you to turn to the Old Testament, the 148th Psalm. The Word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him. All his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever he gave a decree that will never pass away praise the lord from the earth you great sea creatures and all ocean depths lightning and hail snow and clouds stormy winds that do his bidding you mountains and all hills fruit trees and all cedars wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. 
His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. I invite you to turn to the Gospel of Luke. And hear the word of God as Jesus is presented in the temple after his birth. The word of God. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. For it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, you, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then she was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. Glory be to God for God's holy word in both the Old and New Testaments. Amen.
I'd like to invite all the children up front, please. Oh, well. Did he? No, that's all right, Eric. Leave him alone. Uh, I know. I know. That's why I'm coming to you. Are you able to see me still? Nope. Right here? Oh. Okay. This is as far as I could get to y'all children. Well, what I have is in the sack is some is things that we send out to one another. And it's things that we do every year at this time. And uh and I want the children uh, who are watching from afar to guess what might be those things. What do you think might be those things in the sack that we send every year to one another to say Merry Christmas? Christmas cards. And that is what I have here. Christmas cards. And I have just a few Christmas cards that I received. And I wanted to show the children the different pictures of the Christmas cards. And I have a picture of a Christmas card with a manger scene telling a holy night. I have a Christmas card of, of Bethlehem saying, Christmas, it's all about Jesus. I have another beautiful Christmas card here, Christmas Blessing. And this little Christmas card really looks like our church. And then I have a Christmas card that we receive uh, and it's a Christmas card with photos. And, uh, and this is the photos of, um, of Peter, Nellie, and Francis, along with Elizabeth and Floyd. So we receive Christmas cards of all sorts. And this one is, again, a Christmas card of a church, Christmas Blessing. And I just want to share with the children, uh, you know, this is one way for us to share the good news that Jesus is born. And that's a prophetic voice. The title of the sermon, a prophetic voice. And a prophetic voice doesn't mean that it has to be something that we tell in the future. It's something that's happening now. That's a prophetic voice. And I wanted to share with the children and to share with you that as we receive Christmas cards once a year, Christmas is always in our hearts all year. And that makes us the prophetic voice of saying, Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas. And thank you for being the prophetic voice of sharing the good news that Jesus is born. Amen. prophetic voice when I entered the Navy a prophetic voice was told
to be a voice that will comfort the afflicted. Comfort the afflicted. That's a prophetic voice. And to afflict the comfortable. And that's a prophetic voice. To comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. A prophetic voice is one that moves, that moves us to, to recognize that we, you and I, are a prophetic voice of Jesus Christ. Two people enter our scripture lesson today that offer a prophetic voice. Simeon and Anna. Now, I wish I had a photograph, an actual photograph of Simeon and Anna meeting Jesus. Because in my mind, that photograph would be one of loving and tender hands coming to touch Jesus. Again, a prophetic voice of acceptance and love. And with these hands, these hands would represent you and I. Because... These hands were elderly hands, hands that showed some wrinkles and showed some aging spots. And I, and I have those. And it would show hands like our great-grandparents. You may recall our great, your great-grandparents' hands. They weren't always the comfortablest to touch. They were not like mom and dad's. They were not even like grandma and grandpa's. These were hands that were bony, hard, often cold. But again, it is these hands that are a prophetic voice. And these are the hands that touch the baby Jesus. Hands that you and I have. Hands of grandparents, great-grandparents. Hands of the world. I remember my great-grandmother coming to visit my mom when she would have my sister. And apparently she came also when my brother was born. I was the firstborn. I didn't recall her when I came. I didn't do that. And I really don't recall her being there when my brother was born. He's just two years younger than I. But I do recall her coming to be there when my sister was born. And she's five years younger than myself. And I remember quite distinctly those hands loving hands of a grandparent, but hands that were wrinkled, aged, and, well, bony. I always called her Granny, and that's what all the grandchildren called her, Granny. And she was our Granny. And she would come with my grandmother, her daughter, and they would come up to Champaign from Sparta, Illinois to visit, but to care. And that's what families did. They would come from afar and care. And a prophetic voice was that you're going to be loved. A prophetic voice for Simeon and Anna is one that this young child will be loved and will love us. But it will create change. As the scripture said, many will fall and many will rise. 
And I can't help but think of that piece of scripture in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, we will all go to death, but we will all rise in the name of Jesus. I really wish I had a photograph because that's what I would want to share with the children. And I thought about bringing all of you up, if we had all our children up here, to examine all those hands and find out which is, well, the hand with the prophetic voices or the hands with the prophetic voice. And I'm sure we would all qualify in one point or another. But it's interesting in how these two people recognize Jesus. And the, and the requirement, or the, I won't say requirements, but the qualifications, well, it's their devotion. Anna and Simeon were devoted people, worshiping God and praying wanting to see and wanting to know the Christ child, God's peace for the world. It takes great devotion to see the Christ child. It takes dedication, it takes faith, it takes love. Those two spent their entire lives in the temple, waiting for that moment. We spend our entire lives in this sanctuary, experiencing the moment that Simeon and Anna witness. I don't know if Anybody else in Jesus' time along the road as Mary and Joseph made their way to Jerusalem, if they noticed Jesus as the Christ child? Luke doesn't mention anything. We only get a readings of how the shepherds responded to the angels and went to the manger. And here... But I always wondered if anybody else recognized Jesus. And what does it mean to recognize Jesus? Well, I think the key is here. And it's for us today. And that is devotion, our devotion in worshiping and praying to God. Just like Anna and Simeon. The Christ child is alive and it's walking through the world. The prophetic voice is us announcing that the arrival and the birth of the child. That prophetic voice becomes us to enable other people to see just like sending Christmas cards. But to see the Christ child does Cause us to pause. Do we all see it? I see it. I see it in you. I see it in others who have that deep devotion and faith. I see it in the hands that touch people. No matter how soft or hard they may be. No matter how wrinkled or unwrinkled they can be. But that is the prophetic voice. We don't realize that we are Anna and Simeon. We don't realize that at the same time that we are a prophet and prophetess. And we don't realize that we have the gift, the Christmas gift within our hearts. And the Christmas gift is Jesus. 
I don't think we fully realize. I think we realize that Jesus is here. But we don't fully realize what does that all mean for us. Well, for me, it simply means to fear not in the midst of change. In my newsletter, if you have not read it yet, we do have them out there, but it's just simply capturing what I've read throughout this entire Christmas season. To fear not in the midst of change. And we've experienced lots of change these past two years. And we'll continue to experience change. In our, and in the midst of that change, we can never lose our prophetic voice that Jesus is alive, that Jesus loves you, and that the greatest gift that enables us to fear not is the gift of the resurrection. Where, as Simeon pointed out, many will fall and many will rise. Now, he may be talking about political leaders, but I get the feeling he's simply talking about the resurrection, the gift of Christmas time. That's a prophetic voice. So, do take your prophetic voices from within here. Do recognize that you do see Jesus. Because Jesus is within each of your hearts. I see Jesus in each of you. And together, it is a great, great movement. Just like that snow truck that went right by. That's the movement of Jesus in the world. Don't miss it. Amen. Let us stand and let us affirm our faith in the one true God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
to invite the ushers to bring the prayer cards forward, please. Thank you. This morning's uh, prayer request, um, first one comes from Jeanette. Continued prayers for Waylon and his grandfather traveling to Alaska. And as for me, I have a Doppler test on Tuesday. Okay. From Judy Robertson, uh, prayers for surgery uh, on my left eye to correct a vision problem. Wednesday, January 5th, uh, prayers please. Also that my hair stops falling out, indeed. Prayer request from Ed Savage. Prayers for Ron Haskins, who is in the hospital with low blood plate uh, lets. Uh, they are running tests. And Ed, welcome back from your trip. Thank you. And a prayer request from Holly. Uh, health issues uh, for Sue, uh, Lois, and Joanne. Is that Cindy? Yes. Okay. Also would like to remember uh, prayers um, that I received from different family members, uh, prayers uh, for the Bray Brant family and for uh, upon the death of Gary this past uh, Tuesday. Uh, his funeral will be this coming Tuesday here at the church at one o'clock. So let us remember Peggy uh, in our prayers and uh, Gary's children and the extended family. Uh, prayers for Dave O'Connell. Uh, he suffered from some a TIA and a little mini stroke. Um, and he will be coming home January the 7th as planned uh, with Sherry and their daughter April. So they'll be flying up from April, uh, from Florida. Uh, prayers with Michelle uh, McGrady, the Hawks' daughter. And prayers for Carol uh, Rodenbo. Uh, this is uh, Shirley Newhausen's uh, sister, and she's having her MRI on the 10th of January. Uh, prayers for Sharon Peters, who's experiencing sinus infection and bronchitis. And prayers for uh, Micah Prout. Uh, Micah is going to be traveling to Brazil and uh, Tuesday, so prayers for Micah. Um, also, prayers for Heidi's nephew, Logan, uh, who's experiencing anxiety and, and anger uh, issues. And prayers for Heidi, too, uh, upon the passing of, the, upon the death of Cindy and Chris uh, Common. Um, uh, they were um, killed in a hit and run accident. Um, well, uh, Nathan is not here, uh, and Nathan uh, Callender is celebrating his 17th birthday tomorrow, so um, we could sing happy birthday. We could go for happy birthday. Is there anyone else sharing a birthday? Oh, well, come on up, Kathy. 
or you want to stand there or you just want to sit there stand there okay anybody else well let's sing happy birthday to nathan and kathy happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear nathan and kathy happy birthday Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us together this morning by your Holy Spirit to celebrate the Christmas season. It is with your presence in the world as the Christ child that enables us to experience love and the human touch and what love can do to transform the world. Lord, as we bring our hands and fingers and closer together and closer in prayer and to one another, allow your divine love to touch each one that we've mentioned this morning. Do watch over them and do protect them. Do care for them. Do heal them. Do embrace them in the midst of their gladness as well as in the midst of all their sorrows and their concerns. Lord, we're thankful that you've called us to be a holy people. May our prophetic voice be heard. May our prophetic hands be seen. And may everyone in this world know the gift that you give to us in the death and resurrection of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. For this is the power of being a child and children of the light. We thank you for all the lights that surrounds us in the midst of this darkness and especially as nature takes its darkest form. Enable the light in our hearts to always shine. And as you brighten our world and brighten our lives, may we do so and do so in a way that when we pray the, your holy prayer, that we can bring that healing and loving touch to all those that we've mentioned. So let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us pray and pray our and pray to God for our offerings. Dear Heavenly Lord, may you bless these gifts that we give to you. May they be acceptable as the gifts of the Magi, of the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh that they bring to you as a child. Enable us, O oh Lord, to take these gifts and make them to be gifts of love. Do bless us to be your holy people as we give you our love and our devotion. Amen. Let us stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above me.
please turn with me to hymn number 258, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Thank you. 